So, New York. We got Dom and Mike here for now. Uh, we all just hung out for what four days in New York. Uh, why don't I, Dom? You're the one that kind of uh, started this whole conclave and bringing people together. You know the history of the thing. Why don't you do a little like introduction about uh, the show and yeah. anything? Hey, Mike. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up, Dom? Hey, Mike. Mike. Hey, Mike. So, Mike Dom. Mike. Was... Um, yeah. Well, I didn't expect it to really come to much. I mean, I thought at the very least I would go, but um, I, I mentioned it in a video, I don't know, I guess in May or June. I just threw it out there and... Um, a few of you took the bait, Mazzy, you being one, and uh, um, Dave, the VC ambassador, was definitely one who um, wanted to join early. But the WFMU Record Fair has been, I don't know when it first started, but the radio station, the community radio station, is one of the longest running, most influential, you know, uh, most famous, quote unquote, community radio station um, in the country, for sure. Um, well, like, well regarded for its uh, variety and programming and sort of um djs who can play what they want free form um they get a ton of funding and they, they do these massive fundraisers that uh they just seem to top themselves every year but they just they it's the weirdest of the weird the coolest of the cool it's like the it's the creme de la creme of like real radio djs sort of doing their thing and so they started this record fair i honestly don't know when the first year was but i first went in the year 2001 um, at uh, West 18th Street, and it was just a free for all the way I remember that. Um, I, I don't have much memories of you know prices on things. I mean, I don't know, I'm sure people are wondering like, you know, what was uh, what was a kind of blue costing in in 2001? But um, there were bands playing like in the aisles with the dealers. It was sort of um, a true a true um, New York thing, and it was it was a lot of people going to these things. I first, um, I went a bunch of years after that, and then I, I actually was a dealer one year in 2008. Um, and that was the last year I went, actually. They moved it to Brooklyn maybe um, somewhere around 2013-14. And that's like right when I left uh, the city and moved upstate. So I haven't been back since this year. And uh, I've been dying to go back. I think a lot of people have, and it, it felt like there was some definite enthusiasm with it returning. That's, so this that's is the first time they had it at this venue, right? Correct. Yeah. This, and we can, we could talk a little about the venue. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna talk about the venue, which I thought yeah. was good, but then issues about the way they organized it and where, and being not really close to a lot of things. But um, we can like get like the it. subway. Like, yeah. Like yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Arnaldo. Hey guys. Hey Arnaldo. Hey Jason. Hello. Hey uh, Frank. Um, yeah, um, so I, I was super excited that so many people were into this idea. I mean, I've been wanting to have a, a VC meetup uh, or be a part of one um, since I started doing it. So I was really thrilled that this worked out, and it worked. It worked out really well, despite a really rainy Saturday and not the not the greatest geographic location. But um, I don't know. There was definitely enthusiasm in the air. That's for sure. Well, that, that's probably the. The, the biggest negative was the venue itself was great. The location. I mean, I was, it didn't matter to me. I was staying with Arnaldo and Walter and we got a ride there. So I did, I was a little oblivious to that initially. Um, but they had these weird kind of rules. And the main rule that I think kind of stuck out for a lot of us was no outs and back ins, no ins and outs. And this is not like a rave or a concert where people are getting shit faced and coming back in. Yeah. People wanted to go to get a bite to eat or and bring food back or something. And they, especially on Saturday, it was a rainy day. They had one food truck in the middle of the rain with, with and when there was a line, you were standing on the rain for this barbecue truck. And that was it, except for yeah. a bar and a coffee bar. Um, that was it. And come on, you're buying records. You want to go get a taco or something? That was kind of weird. I'm confused. Did you want to start trouble? We could have got shit. <laughs> and, um, you know, oh, can you bring the mo you can bring the motorcycle gang, Jason? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we could. Have. <laughs> no, but that wasn't that kind of wonky. Like, I don't see what the. Oh point yeah, totally. Was. This is the first time. I mean, 
I've been to other shows at the Javits. You can go in and out as much as you want. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what the e issue was there. Maybe they didn't want to have to do security again. Yeah, I don't know. They could didn't they could do wristband. I mean, they gave you a wristband if you wanted to buy some of the bar, but you, they could have given you a stamp. Yeah, like they do in any venue. Yeah, it's especially odd because the the ticket was referred to as a weekend pass. To me, that means like you come and go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's wonder, a good point. I wonder if anyone tried. Like, what if you left and came back and showed your thing again? Would it did it show that you already walked in or something? Because I guess yeah. you could theoretically share it to someone else and they would come in free. But who's really doing that? I don't know. Yeah. It was as if they were really going by these arbitrary rules for like, you know, some major concert, you know. Yeah, it was like a venue sense. rule or something more than the. Uh... Or, or maybe, um, I don't know, I've never used dice before. Maybe the dice is not that type of QR. I don't know. I'm just wondering because it's the first time I've ever seen that. I think I think uh, digital gramophone John's got it. They didn't want they didn't want you starting your own fair on the side there. You know, <laughs> yeah. Give me a break. I don't know what. I mean, I mean, we were it was no man's land because Alex and Mazzy we we went out to try to get food and, and I know I had records with me and and we we're in standing in the rain with no shelter like waiting like we're about to wait online for a, a truck food truck. We're like this is just not going to work. We were no yeah we were waiting for that Uber and. And the problem that was, was that apparently there's a, I don't know if you're coming out of a bridge or they're coming off of a freeway, but right in front of the venue, like all these lanes merge. So traffic was horrendous. So you're waiting for a, a pickup car that's around the corner for 15 minutes or something, you know, but let's, let's about as, yeah. anyway, what about the, the fair itself musically and records and so when when you guys went in what like because the the the, the lay of the land was um it, w it wasn't just a single kind of uh auditorium space there were kind of a couple different rooms um or or wings so when you guys went in what where did you guys go to start when you came right in, oh like wh who did we pick going first yeah like where like what table like what because I went in, I, I kind of, I didn't start where we went in. I just started walking. Actually, Jason and I came in together and then we started, I don't know how we ended up in like one of the wings. We just, we just did. Tell the truth. Actually, I just, I just dragged you to the, you know, the wing. Yeah, it worked out really well because the best jazz table was, was in that area. And I didn't even know that. And I was, I was going through this guy's bins. Um, his name's Joe. And uh, I think his, his like record thing is like JE records and just incredible selection. And I was looking through it. I was like, should I pull the trigger on these or should I go see what else I can find? Um, and yeah, it was, it was really difficult. There was a lot of really good tables there. So uh, anyway, I was just curious what, like when you guys first started, where did you start digging? Um, I ended up at Billy's table unbeknownst to me. I just started walking around. I should have gone in with a strategy, which I, I kind of had one, but I just wanted to sort of, basically I'm looking, I mean, I've told a few of this, I'm looking for one record seriously. Like there's one record I absolutely must have. And I just needed to scan all of the walls first and foremost to see if it was there. So I wanted to see every wall possible. And so I walked around the whole thing. And when I didn't see it, I ended up on this corner table. And I'm looking through like two bins. I'm like, these are interesting records. Like, this is a cool mix of stuff. And then and Billy just walks up and he's like, hey, it's Billy. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. Of course. Coming in hot. Billy came in hot. When I just, I, on my video, I had that. I just brought the camera to him. And of course, he came in hot, which is great. That's how it was for me, too. That was, he exactly was the greatest host. We'll get into that, I'm yeah. sure. You know, his, yeah. 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 I did a similar thing. I just kind of walked around and scanned what was pinned up on the board just to kind of get an idea because you could kind of sort of tell uh, what that vendor would have just based on that. Um, and then just to see if there was anything right off the bat that I would want. But then after that, I just sort of meandered. I didn't really have a, a strategy. Yeah, Nick, everybody here was in. Uh, they came from upstate New York. Uh, Fred, uh, Frank, excuse me, Frank and uh, Dom came from upstate. And yeah, I came in from Pittsburgh. Uh, Dom Brandon up. is not on the not on the stream. He he picked me up from Buffalo. I mean, Jason came from Austin. I came from Seattle. And then 
Mike and uh, Arnaldo are local, and Mike more or less. Well, you came from yes. Mike Jazz. I took the train train in from uh, Connecticut. Connecticut. Okay. Yeah. I was just three miles away. So. And here's the uh, this is Motoric Beetle Channel twenty four seven. He's here to get his chess revenge. You know that's what he's here for. Alex. Alex. Hi, Alex. Alex, <laughs> aren't you supposed to be 360? What's that 247? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry. I, yeah. I feel so like I bonded with Alex for the first time. It was, it was a, fun, a good time. got a pretty nasty uh, virus there. Which, oh, did you? Yeah, I'm fighting right now, but uh, oh, I figured no. I'd come on for oh. a little while here. Is it okay. COVID? So I guess that means uh, Dom and Brandon and I will probably be getting it any day now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I... I I tested negative. Um, I didn't start feeling badly till I kind of till I landed. Um, and then yeah, today's been a bit of a struggle. But. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry to hear that. I mean, I know that you know once you meet get to meet Mazzy, you know he can make you a little sick, right? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm thank here. You. I will say. Let me just thank. For, I mean, you were talking earlier. I guess before we got on, you guys, four of you, shared. Uh, uh, Airbnb, but Arnaldo and Walter hosted me in Queens, and it was really great. And was, I thanked them uh, profusely. It was just really sweet and really nice and very comfortable. Yeah, and we did a whack and roll with Jason there. That was great. And Notes got some. Uh, Mike got some good stuff. Eh, I did. Okay. I mean, I did okay. Um, you know, I didn't have any strategy. It's, um, you know, next time I'll have a, I'll have a list of stuff that I want. But you know, I found I found some stuff that I really um, needed. But um, yeah, no strategy at all. Did anyone use have a list and really go looking? I mean, Dom, you said you were looking for one thing, but did, did you have a list? Like any of you guys? Like have a list of stuff. I had labels. I was looking for Indian navigation, uh, Strata East, ESP disk, uh, Futura, America. Like so, I was looking for labels, and then within that, making decisions. I had no list. I just kind of know what's on my Discogs list. Um, and it was nice to be able to just go openly and not even really be looking for anything in particular. Just whatever I came across that seemed interesting, that's what I'm going for. There was a lot of Blue Note. For, just from a jazz perspective, if you wanted, like, early Blue Notes, they had tons. Like, it was crazy. And price, I mean, early, like, originals or just early pressing? I, I wasn't pulling them out to look at, like, pressing details, but they were priced like they were originals. A lot, I mean, and then just varied, like... They had a depending on grading, like the, the prices were kind of all over the place. That was that was the other thing. You, you kind of had to, uh, like, I, I feel like I made out really well with prices, but at the same table, I saw things that were overpriced. So you kind of just had to be aware of, you know, that uh, there were good deals, there were deals, you know, pricing was kind of varied. How, how many tables? I don't know how many tables. The second day, one room was closed, the one annex. But um, I, I want to say there were at least a hundred tables, right? Oh, at least. Yeah. I yeah. think I think I kept the. Um, I think I kept the plan. I'll be right back and get it. And prices were all over the. I thought some prices were very reasonable, and obviously there's some always like you know a handful of the things that were way up there and crazy like that. <clears throat> yeah, you have, I mean, you have to negotiate. The more you spend, the bigger the discount. Yeah, yeah. Every time, exactly. yeah. yeah. There were records I saw that I would have loved to have, but they weren't even near what I would have considered. So, you, know, you just let those go and find this. better deals. Mike Notes and Tones doesn't have a channel, but he hangs out a lot on Fridays with the Jazz Bums. Friday, uh, eight p.m. Eastern, five p.m. Western every Friday live stream. So here's here's kind of the map. I don't know if, if it's easy to see, but yeah, there, there was a map. There was a map. They basically handed out a flyer with all the details of what all the tables were, and then the map. So as you can see, like we, so so we came in. I think this was the entry point here. Yeah. Okay. So you'd come in, and then I, Jason, and I went this way, and then we went down over here. 
And this guy's table right here was, yeah. I think, you know, for, for like American jazz, there was, there was also a French table that had stuff that I had, I'm sure there was killer stuff there, but I didn't even know where to start with it. Um, and anyway, so that was kind of the layout and Billy's table was over here. Billy was right there in that corner. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was cool. So anyway. A lot of tables. I was bummed to not see that table, Mike, back Sunday. There was things I wanted to go back for at that table, and he was gone. That whole wing that... was gone. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Oh, the French guy. The the French guy. He was the French guy. Was there the the dealer you oh. were talking about? That was that maybe in that. Yeah, there was a guy from Indianapolis who was tucked in over there. I bought some stuff from. Uh, he said he was not coming back for the second day. But if there's <laughs> something that you wanted from there, I got his card. He has a discog shop. Yeah. What uh, we just counted all the vendors um, between the two days. Um, there were 139. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say about just browsing through. I want to say about 70 percent of them, or maybe yeah, 70 or 75 percent of them were there on both days. Um, and I want to say yeah, there's like about 30 that only, that only did Saturday. Interesting. Yeah, Mike, the guy, um, the, the jazz table that you ended up behind the table, helping people, he didn't. He didn't come back Saturday, um, Sunday. He said he wasn't coming back. Um, Just so true, but jazz bum form. I was there for ten minutes, and I was already behind the best jazz table helping people. So. Uh, Joe Marino just showed up late, like he always, like he showed up at the show and hanging out. Can you hear us? Joe, Joe you is hear us. your birthday today, Joe? Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Joe. He can't hear us. Either that or he's a hostage. <laughs> blink. Blink if you need help. <laughs> Joe, did you get that Taylor Swift? He's on, a, he's on the loop. He's on a loop. Okay. <laughs> It's you know how that when they like Mission Impossible they break in and they put the camera on a loop. So that, like, oh man! <laughs> man. <laughs> um, the late John, guy. At some point, we should show some things, some records we got. What was the record, Dom? You said there was a record you were looking for. Your number. Yeah, can you share it? that, or is that top secret? Uh, well, <laughs> well, I didn't find it. Obviously, I look oh, every okay. day. It's the only record I look for every day in all of variety of sources. It's uh, don't, say this, it. uh, don't say it. Yeah, that's it's the stunty rule. It's like you don't okay, don't okay, tell that's people fair. what you're looking that's for. Fair. I mean, no, I I don't think anyone cares that much. It's not. It's a it's a dub reggae record. It's it's uh, by this artist named Brenda Ray, and um, it's a long ass story, but it's 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 very special to me. Mazzy, you would like it because she does like this close mic sort of whispery vocal. So I'll I'll send you a link to it. So it, am I pegged out. for like close light, close vocals? I it? think I think so. Okay, what artist would that be like? Um, okay, that's David Lowry and um, uh, Big Dipper on Cracker album. That is, mm -hmm. you know, I'm gonna show that just because I I have this thing. Every time I hear this song, I get a tear, and this is everyone's gonna laugh at me and mock me. But fuck you guys. Um, this record, I've been looking at a vinyl version. I've had it since it came out. Because think about it. This album came out when I was 42 years old, about the, your age of you, most of you guys, or some of you guys here. In your early 40s, I had a six-year-old kid. And the song, Big Dipper, and if you know, if you know Cracker, David Lowry, after Camper Van Beethoven, uh, this I didn't realize um, until I got this home, this is a classic record pressing. I guess it didn't come out on yeah. vinyl through Virgin. Yeah. I had no idea. It sounds phenomenal, but that song, I played the song like six times today. It's, it, and it's, every time I hear that song, it's kind of about the in Santa Cruz, the boardwalk, because a camper van was from down that area. That song just tears me up. And it's got that whispering, close voice, beautiful piano, kind of dirgy, folksy. Uh, anyway, just, it's, it's anyway, loved it. And that that was I got that on Friday night on the wall in that brook at head head what is it headspace? Human, Human head. head. Uh, Human head. It was there all alone. No one walked up to her, and I grabbed her and brought her home. 
We should mention that the the Friday night. No, oh, and I also have a question, Mazzy. Um, in your record store crawl that Arnaldo set up, the video you did, you were talking to that dude out front of Academy, and he mentioned a pre-sale Friday night at the fair, which I was unaware of. Is that true? Oh, really? Did that actually happen? I I heard. You know, when I was doing that, I really wasn't paying attention. I, then I later I thought he was talking about the her the Herman's head, the human, whatever it's called, that place. So I don't know if it's true, but I didn't hear anything about that from anyone else. I doubt that. You know why? Because I think all the dealers had a 7 a.m. load in. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know who was going to be there. Okay, maybe that guy was talking smack. Okay. Maybe, yeah, who, maybe who's maybe going to let him in? <laughs> Pre-party something else like we did at Billy's, but it's that Right. You know, because like you said, at Herman's, Herman's head, I'm going. Herman's, like, Herman's. I'm fucked up. About uh, that, that place, didn't one of the uh, dealers from another area do two. like a pop-up right but two two dealers were there two. yeah right. so maybe two maybe that's what he was referring right to from pittsburgh mind cure? yeah there's uh yeah. it's mind cure yeah. from pittsburgh he, yeah, that's, that's where i bought most of my stuff from on friday yeah, he's great yeah. strangely i haven't been to his shop and it's just right down the street from me yeah yeah, yeah the, the i bought a bunch at the between those two dealers friday night the um we found a grail for dave we should mention dave the vc ambassador who couldn't make it um he was there was he sent we sent around a list of like five records that we were all gonna look for each other you know you know with you figure if you have more eyes on these records if someone sees one you could text somebody and be like hey i found it well one one of the five i think dave sent we found that night from that dealer who was at human head not not mind cure the other guy um and i mean i couldn't believe it I, I just flipped right past him like wait this is this is dave's record and and we took it home we have it yeah let's let's do a toast for dave dave has been uh in and out of the hospital last week pc ambassador dave he had a when i was out there talking to ken uh mcauliffe was jason with me well, who was with me then and with me it was you, you brought the live stream of him and him and him and i won't get into details but him and ken had a 20 minute conversation of something that was not musical about a, a, a in, of, anyway health issues that's all i'll say it was quite enter, entertaining and no i'm not mocking or laughing at people's misfortunes of your sickness but it was they were comparing you know it's like old people that's what when you get old you talk about set of records about some procedure or sickness you've had so, so. <laughs> old man I think it's perfect for the for the the kind of crew that was at the fair you know like the elder gentleman types talking about their prostates you know yeah i tried to keep up with you kids when we were running through the rain but i you know yeah. that was fun actually we we hit uh, what store was that we ran upstairs to the brooklyn oh. record exchange all oh, right right yeah yeah i found some good stuff there what i'm what glad the record's that? not warped by the way oh yeah 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 so here th this is what i i'll just show you really quick yeah, right go ahead. There. so so at that, that place they had a lot of great 45s and i had no idea what any of them were so i was just grabbing stacks of them and listening to them um so pretty much everything i got is just because of the music that was on it so i mean there's nothing like you know spectacular to look at but all of these this, I was able to stretch my money further because these are like four and five dollars a piece. I don't know if anyone knows what any of these are, just chime in. But uh, this one, I was looking at it, and Dom said it's really great, so I picked it up. And he's right, it's really good. Uh, then I got this, Rundy Black. This is great. Yeah. Some kind of it's like a, a drum sample um, from like recorded in the late 60s from some tribe, and then. This came out in early '81, where the guy from Visage, the drummer from Visage, added added some drums and. Uh, what uh what label what record label is that on? Uh, Barclay. The back oh, is okay. the back is kind of the French up. the French label. Yeah, I think it's there. You go. I mean, the the cover is completely trash, but the music is amazing. Maybe Sam Records could do one of those. It's like a Sam thing. Yeah, cool. so I got it the Brooklyn Record Exchange. It's a good store. Frank, are you using vinyl in your uh, chimney there? I think that's a problem. Yeah, I was wondering, Frank. Are those <laughs> the records are going to 
<laughs> I should, I should just like that. Right now. Uh, yeah, that, that was. Um, I, I know everyone's had that friend who says, "Oh, hey, I just got all these old records. Like my great aunt died. Uh, I'll give them to you." And they're they're filling my fireplace. They've been there for a year. You should just put a, sh- a couple shelves in there. At least you stack them nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Now they, they just went they went in there a while back and I just haven't dealt with it yet. They're probably going to the Goodwill. Mad Vinyl Peter Parker hung out with us too uh, on the Friday night. Oh, he's in the, oh, he's here. Okay. in the gallery. Anyone show? Let me, I'm going to show. I'm going to show one more before we go on because uh, Dom, I think it was the Martini I had pulled out some stuff and he showed me this. I didn't know what this was, but. Right, uh, let me just, right, seeing the cover, I bought it, I wanted it because I'm a fan of uh, Robert Longo, the artist, it's like the downtown East Village artist from the early 1980s. Uh, He did this series of men falling and uh, large full-size charcoal pencil things based on photographs. If you ever saw the TV show Mad Men, the beginning is influenced by Robert Longo's work. And this is Glenn Bronca. I didn't know this guy at all. It's sensing. It's 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 kind of noise. A little Sonic Youth. A lot of guitar overdubs. Guitar Lee Ronaldo from Sonic Youth is on it, and it some of it's really out there. But then it gets into some almost like classic rock riffs for a little while, like the Who is next, and then it gets beyond it. But um, so thanks, Dom, for. Uh, for this so yeah and you educated me on the artist um uh robert longo i wasn't aware of that but i do want to point out that it's on the the great uh, lower east side label nine nine records which is uh famous for having liquid liquid on it which had the the great uh white line track which was sampled by every hip-hop artist you could think of and if anyone's interested in finding out more about the nine nine label i did a two-part series on the label because i I collected all the releases and I went through all the releases and the history and everything. So uh, that's an early um, two two part video in my channel. Yeah, well, I know. Uh, Jazz shit Brooks as Bronco was uh, Bronco was major noise. Not all of this is like that though. I mean, some of it is, but then uh, some of it it's very. I don't know. I don't want to say jammy, but very you know, repetitive. Almost more like in the Sonic Youth era a little bit. So I thought you know. I've only heard it once, though. Sounds great. I love the. I know I'm a little superficial. I like the cover, and that that sold me. That is a yeah. great cover. Speaking of samples, I got this at Billy's store. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, like, one, it, uh, like a just a bedrock of hip hop samples. There. Let's talk about Billy's store a little bit. We had a Saturday night. Uh, Billy, if you don't know Billy, he has a uh, doesn't have a channel. Uh, does he? I don't think he does. He he's a guy who's had a in the club scene in New York has a, a music venue. He's a partner in, I guess, for about ten years. And I guess during the pandemic or at the end of the pandemic, he opened this place in an old unisex hair nail salon. And the sign is still up there, and he calls it uh, Billy's Record Salon. A lot of all used. Some pretty rare jazz stuff, some good stuff. And he hosted a party, uh, after party there at 8 o'clock after the record show. And we all were there, I think, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was there. So I'm pretty sure yeah. we were all It was Joe. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because we're in the fall in the photo, that's why. And it was fun. I mean, Alex and I played a chess game. And uh, we all – I said it would remind me it was like a Tupperware party because he invited everyone over. And we all, I think all, almost all of us bought records there. I did. I, I had blown my bud for the whole trip, but then by the time we got there, he had so much good stuff. Yeah. You got this. Uh, for, uh, yeah, I, I've I've been looking for this. I mean, it's not a rare record, but I've been looking to get this. Magazine, like Columbia, this Columbia Records. That yeah, is. I, why don't you explain <laughs> that? I have I have an original of that. I bought it when it came out. We played it in the store to drive people out of the store. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, it's allegedly. <laughs> I mean, allegedly produced by Brian Eno. At least he does the sleeve notes. But this is this is an orchestra conducted by this guy John Farley. And maybe you know the story better than me. But um, they're doing standards, standard, um, you know, sort of um, band fair, you might say, but um, in a very, we'll just say, untrained way. And 
I, I just find this to be, I, you know, sometimes I want music that makes me laugh and smile and it, it literally brings me joy. And it's hard not to listen to this and just and I laugh think it a little starts, bit. I think it starts with also Sprock of our Sustra, the 2001 theme. And it and they're all that's on playing, side two, side two. Oh, okay. They're all playing almost like <clears throat> almost different keys, different tempos, and just really wild. And look at on the, it's on the Columbia label. Do you know the story behind that, Mazzy? Because that is bizarre. Well, I, I don't know exactly how they got there, but we used to play that. I yeah, we played that in, and it just you, it makes you laugh, or people either hate it or love it. I mean, we played it back at the apartment. We all we all had a great chuckle. And, we thought it was um, funny, but uh, Dom, I had texted you. I kept humming those tunes for days. Yeah. Like, like it was all fucked up in my head, though. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was it's humming the wrong them. Way. That stuff. I love that record, but it's. This I was, mean, this was like twenty bucks. You it's know, like a novelty much. record in a way, but it's still kind of cool. Yeah, you you shouldn't pay a lot for this, but no, I probably paid more than. I mean, but whatever. It, you don't see it that often. I'll share one Here's for Billy's shop. Okay. I picked up this record, which is an, uh, an OG on Prestige, the big sound, uh, Gene Ammons. Um, I thought it was I thought it was pretty intriguing just because it had John Coltrane on alto. Um, so I did a little bit of digging. It was kind of an interesting session. It was, it was supposed to be led by Gene Ammons, and he didn't show up to Prestige that day because they had to fly him in from Chicago every time they had a session. Um, and so they called uh, Paul Kinoche, vice pres, to fill in on tenor um and they get to um they get to rudy's and there's gene ammons waiting so they decide let's just get two two tenors on the session and so uh, they recorded so a uh, really cool group of guys um you know really interesting i mean i think it's it's kind of cool to hear you know gene ammons kind of fat sack sound um john coltrane coming off of uh his time playing alto with with um dizzy uh so really cool to, and happy to have an og copy of this i um, mean it was very reasonably priced at billy so shout out to billy that's cool is that on is that an nyc label or a building field oh no maybe it isn't an og sorry this is this is a trident my bad okay no those sound really good yeah yeah it is i think it's it's rvg stamp that's cool and pepper adams that's killer he's i'm assuming he's playing baritone yeah so you have two you have two tenors i mean Paul Kinoche kind of just jumps in for solos. He's not playing, you know, throughout all the tracks. But it's just cool to have two guys on tenor. You got Jerome Richardson on flute. You got um, John Coltrane on alto and then Pepper Adams on Barry. I mean, it's, it's very woodwind heavy, but it's really a cool session. Yeah. And any other showcases? Yeah. Billy, I can show one. I got oh. uh, not some. So I'm just, Jason, do you want to go ahead? Um, I got this at Billy's. Quincy Jones, a dude, and it was very inexpensive. That's A and M, right? A and M Records. Yeah, and it's you know it's like near mint. Um, and then I got something that um, I wasn't looking for, but I'm glad I did find it. Uh, the UK copy of the Jesus and Mary Chain's first album. Is that uh, a UK? UK? Yeah, it's a UK copy, and this also is like near mint. And I don't know if you, the records that you guys want, um, they're all, looks like they've all been cleaned uh, ultrasonic. I think Billy cleans them all. And he He's got a hum and ding, hum and Yeah, ding. and he re-sleeves them all in like the, um, you know, the uh, rice paper sleeves. So he does a really nice job. And, and I think what's what's wild to me in conversation plus, with Billy. I saw a 10% discount, I think, or something. Yeah, he did. He gave us, yeah. What's wild to me about Billy's shop is that he, he's not buying collections to sell. You know, he he told me that that's basically just his collection. So yeah, there is, that makes there is, it, it, it's almost like this bittersweet <laughs> element of digging through someone's like personal collection and then carrying them up there and watching the disappointment in his face that he has to let go of them. So it, 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 it's very interesting buying experience. But I love that know. Mike, both mics were getting next to each other uh, manipedes. Did you notice that? Yeah, <laughs> getting or get, I think they were giving each other them. <laughs> I, I thought you had some there. Also, you know what's great about Billy's is he had two listening stations, so you could pull and go check it out. And you know, we were chatting and like it, it, I had a great time at Billy's. I gotta say, I, I went in 
Uh, I was all business. I went right to his new arrivals bin. Didn't say hi to anybody. Just sort of flipping. You were pretty rude. Oh, man. Just I, to I, we couldn't tear Mike It wasn't rude I at all. I had to tap you on the shoulder a couple times. We you were on the out. ground digging the whole time. Everyone else was having a party. Uh, why don't you talk about the record behind you, Mike? Oh, uh, that's Bobby, Bobby Timmons chunkin this is a uh, this has gotten up there in price so he had this um you know bobby timmons he has this here's bobby timmons with the original composition of monan which was then adapted when bobby timmons joined the jazz messengers and is on the famous monan album uh he has some other riversides as well um anyway this, this is hey, one of the hey. most that's hey. a great find mike that's a great find Thank you, thank you, thank you. I didn't recognize you without your shirt saying that tells you your name. I know people are so confused right now. I know <laughs> you had. A, I heard you had a live performance in your store this evening. I did. They're still. They're all still here. But I just wanted to say hi. Um, Isaiah Collier played from Chicago. He's playing Brick Jazz Festival tomorrow night, and uh, yeah, he's a really amazing um, musician. Yeah, it was crazy. Well, thanks for stopping by. We were just like raving about our time with you. It was like a highlight of our weekend. It, it was super fun. This party is nowhere near as fun as that party. Don't tell this party that. But, uh, <laughs> well, is anybody playing chess? Is anybody playing chess? No, but a girl and her mom came in and played chess. They didn't buy any records, but they played. Well, you, should and, uh, you should charge one, like have like a meter. I got to find, yeah, I got to find ways to make money here. I think that's a good. That would be a good idea. That would be a good idea. Have you guys been <laughs> have you guys been showing your records from the festival? From yeah. the fair. A little of everything. Yeah. And we're gonna continue. So all right, yeah. I'm I'm here. I'm just if it's too loud, let me know. I'll mute. I just Okay. You're good. Okay. Yeah, I just want to show one um well I got something I got from Billy's. I picked up this one. Um Jimmy Forrest um uh, recording on Delmark uh, a great Chicago label. And you know, Grant Green and Elvin Jones. I have there's another one that's basically outtakes from this session that I have, so it was good to get, um, to get this. And I mean, it was a really good price, so that was good. And then I picked up, um, India Navigation Air, um, Henry Threadgill, uh, Fred Hopkins, and Steve McCall. Also from Billy's, another um, excellent price. And then I think Alex handed me this from like, um, he was looking at a, um, through a bin, another air recording on RCA Novus. These were all um, just a few of the things I got at Billy's. That's a cool cover. What, what kind of music is that? Um, I guess that people call it um, Henry Threadgill avant-garde. You know, I, I hate that term, but you know, um, he's a great composer, um, alto saxophone player, flute. Um, he's one of you know the great American composers of you know, you know, well, I can't say the second half of the century because it's you know, but he's one of the great American composers. Hey, Billy, are you yeah. the man who left Billy Paul's Mrs. Jones? That's a question from the audience. I guess not. Um, uh, I, am the, I am not involved with that recording. Okay. Um, what, Jason, you haven't shown any records, have you? Are you standing up or sitting down? Standing up. Okay. Not so. I'm good. Um, this is by uh, T. Swift. As everyone knows, uh, Taylor Swift, she invented the time machine and she went back to the 1960s and worked with a guitar great named Jerry Cole and they formed a band together called T. Swift, the electric bag. So, uh, wow. One of those budget psych, you know, free form and sticks. Where'd you get that? Uh, good question. Oh, I got it from my buddy, Ron House. Uh, Ron House is a guy who is from Columbus, Ohio. He was set up at the FMU. Wow. Um, but is it the guy I got the um, Colin Blundstone from? Yes, yes, yes. Is it the guy that I got the Clifford Brown from? <laughs> yes, yes. That could be my copy, too. <laughs> yeah, that's a cool one. There, you wonder if some the question secret... mark would have, like, infringed on copyright. That's why there's no question mark. 
Could be two D's, Billy. I don't know, man. Could be misspelled. Are you experienced? Is, is how, what is is that? That's not a question. That's not a statement. Well, is it is it the Hendrix song? No yeah, comment. I don't want to get I don't want to get us sued here. Is it, it's a cover of the Hendrix song. It's like right. It's not a cover. right. It could he be. hasn't listened to it yet. <laughs> is there a Jimi Hendrix authorship on the label? I mean, doesn't this look like Taylor? Come on now. Yeah. You're really milking this one. <laughs> I think we hung out. I think we hung out together too long. Yes, we had too many martinis together. Well, there are you know, some that's secret good... heaters on that on those labels, those I'll budget labels right like Custom also, and what? and uh, Crown. On live there's, some, there's some secret heaters on those labels. Bunch of... Is somebody watching? Oh, that's uh, Billy's party. Okay. What, I would what? say B Billy was also, in addition to just having a, like a, a killer selection, he was an excellent host. Oh, I mean, stop it! He, you had a full bar, open bar, with with other with other activities, which were which were fun. And what does that mean? Yeah. What other activities did I miss? Party favors. <laughs> there, were, there were party favors. There were Cookies. there was a, a a DJ setup. There's great like DJing. It, Alex it was, was just, Alex was crushing it on the one and two. So I'll quickly show what I picked up from Billy. Those, those blondie it... brownies, Billy. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and, and don't forget Wilfredo's monster joint blunt or whatever he left you. <laughs> so I got just from Billy's. I got I got this Bobby Timmons, which was on my want list. Um, I wanted to get something from Hemi at Bluet. Uh, I was looking actually on Indian Navigation, but this is a Soul Note release. I'm sorry, a Black Saint release. Um, with him that's really nice enjoy this i got this is out of print and i'm pretty sure it won't come back in print there's certain sam records that are out of print forever and this one has nathan davis freddie hubbard jackie byard and reggie workman so it's a it's a really cool uh it, it, it's not a messenger's lineup it says the new jazz man but i was able to get this for i mean it was a bundled price that was exceptional that's um, true. And and uh, Billy threw this in for VCLT, which is ridiculous. Thank you. This is a, a Gatto Barbieri on a ESP disc and an early Gatto. Um, and I think that's it. That's all I got. I got those those four. So, and also just an amazing time hanging out with people. Hey Billy, do you have this record? I was told that you might have had it there, and I didn't see it. Oh my God! I was just playing, literally playing that record. You know, you know that record? Yeah, I've been looking for it. And I I would have been all over it if I'd Damn. seen it. Damn! Yeah, I was playing that tonight. There's like this kind of not circular breathing, but it's like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a bass yeah. player, that player. Yeah, awesome. yeah. It had that. It had that vibe. Yeah, I was playing that. I got that um, from a record shop in Red Hook. And nice. then I put a bunch of his record, other records on my want list, but I haven't taken the plunge into any others. Is from your knowledge, is that like probably one of the better ones, or have you listened to any other work? Because it seems like a big discography there. Yeah, I, I have like all of them from the seventies, and I they're all good. Okay, cool. Some, some of them are just harder to find than others. All right, well, I'll message you on the side, and uh, we'll work out a trade, or I'll send it to you, or something. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Any other shows? I'll oh, say sure. um, go for it. Show a jazz record that I bought. This I was excited to find this Doug Hammond uh, with Karen Joseph on the Ibadib Ibadib label. This was a super fair price, and it's and the record looks like it's a little warm, but it actually plays pretty well. There's some there's some I could see some really interesting drum breaks that end up on this, but in a very sort of subtle way and uh it's really just vocals drums piano voice and flute and i i personally love uh flute in any context so um billy hooked me up with this and um another one i've been looking for since the year 2001 now i could have bought it for many uh, many times but i just always escaped me and i have all the, the other rapture stuff i need but this is such a an amazing dance punk EP. The first track out of the races and onto the tracks. When I first heard this in this club, uh, I think it was the cooler, which was on the west side of Manhattan. Uh, it, it immediately grabbed me, and uh, it's just one of the greatest uh, dance punk songs I've ever heard. So 
This was just sitting in the bins at uh, at Billy's. Thank you. I I found a copy of Mirrors too um, at the oh, festival. Oh, nice. Yeah. Do you have that? Early. You probably have that. No, I like it. I, I actually like this a little better. Mirrors. Oh yeah, sort me of like... too. It's Mirrors is moodier, I guess. They're like yeah. kind of like yeah. This is like the this is like the the, the groove one, you know. And Billy also was was super great to trade with. Like I, that's another thing about none of the dealers would have would he would hear me out with my records I wanted to trade. I think they wanted to shift stuff, but Billy was super gave me a really fair price for the stuff I brought and uh, worked out well. Yeah, I'm ignoring Jose. Okay, <laughs> um, I'll show a couple more. I, yeah, I, I only I bought the entire uh, four days, three and a half days, whatever. I bought nine records, so I was, I just liked hanging out a little bit. And um, weirdo. <laughs> but I was, I'm a weirdo. Oh, no, you're sure. <laughs> there's a um, there's an art project. These photographers would shoot these various people. The weirdo project, longer yeah. story. Anyway. Um, I was getting more into uh, like soul R and B, and well, you'll see what it is. Uh, and I'm not going to take them out of the plastic, which I usually do. And I, I chastise everyone else for not taking them out. But uh, I got two Last Poets records at different stores. I've been in a mood for uh, you know, Last Poets, seventies. This one's on Casablanca, and this one is on um, Douglas, Douglas Three, Last Poets. I got an Ann Peoples records, one I didn't have. Uh, I had gotten three Ann Peoples records from the Coleman collection, and I fell in love with those records. You know, I only knew, I think, before that, I Can't Stand the Rain. And I knew her stuff a little bit, but, you know, I mean, it's the easiest, if you don't know Ann Peoples, it's like take an Al Green record, same producer, same musicians, and have her voice over it. It's friggin' amazing. So I didn't know this particular record. I got this at um, Stranded. And then I got uh, The Hunter. Not a, uh, it's, it's not an uncommon record, but I haven't seen a clean copy of this. Obviously, I can Tina Turner. You know, I love this cover and I love this record. Uh, so I can Tina. So it's my, those are most of my soul picks I got this time. Yeah, I picked up one um, soul um, record um, at um, Friday night at Human Head, and I had been looking for this, a, a decent copy of this for the longest. Oh, yeah. uh, the Curtis impression Mayfield, it? Yeah. with Curtis Mayfield, and yeah, the the last song on side two, I really I really like um, Mighty Mighty Spade and Whitey, and I just I love the back photo there at um, 125th Street. So, um, and I got, yeah, I got this at Human Head on Friday night, and it was a really, it was a decent, decent price, and the cover is cool. in really good condition. Very cool. I picked so up that's... a bunch. Of, I picked up a bunch of stuff while I was there. It's a little bit different because I picked up like probably 150 records or something like that. So it's it's it, a lot of it is maybe stuff I'll sell. I mean, definitely stuff I'll probably sell, but I. I was away, and I just literally got back last night. Atlanta for another <laughs> business thing, but then and then I got back. I missed my flight actually from the fair in Newark, and then I had to get a hotel in Newark. That was terrible. And then take a six a.m. flight to Atlanta. Um, but then I got here today and uh, started looking through a few things, and I guess I cleaned a few things and listened to a few things. For some reason, I can't make you big now. It's not letting me on your thing. I don't know your your band, so I. You'll just have to. Oh, I like to be amongst the people anyway. It's so, on my okay. end. It's I don't know. It's for some reason you, yeah. Make me big. Come on, man. Make me big. Um, this <laughs> oh, thing. I don't. Oh yeah. This record. Or, is anyone, anyone familiar with this? Mm -mm. This was actually on um, uh, melodic, which was Roy Ayers' label, and it's kind of listed as like a jazz funk. Uh, record but it's definitely more like kind of in the spiritual modal kind of smoky really amazing i listened to this all the way through today um it's justo justo al mario um and it's it says produced by ray airs but i'm pretty sure <laughs> Roy airs because sure this is his label unless i'm confusing it 
There's a famous single or record, uh, Sylvia Striplin. Do you guys know that artist who had, um, was like sampled by, I think like a Puff Daddy or something like that. But the song is really recognizable. But Harold Land plays piano and hand claps on here. Um, who else is recognizable? Oscar Bashir plays trumpet. And then the other people I'm not quite familiar with. But this record, highly recommended. I want it. It was like one of those records where I played it and I wanted to hear it again. And like when I play the other side right away, that's for, you know, when you have a lot of records and you want to hear that one right away, that's that's kind of crazy. Um, I haven't listened to this yet, but I've already labeled it. But this is. um. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm. Coltrane's on that. Yeah. And I guess Ray only had three days as a leader. And this is the same year as the record they made for Jazzland, right? Um, mm. But great condition. Sounded pretty good. I cleaned it. I haven't gotten a chance to listen to it. It was kind of like. Next that's up, on jubilee that's a jubilee on, record yeah it's on jubilee really heavy vinyl um yeah. but yeah someone else was on here that was kind of interesting i don't know maybe like tommy flanagan or something maybe um but yeah i mean i i uh that other record he did you know the draper and you know the the one with Coltrane on it um yeah there are two i think yeah prestige new jazz yeah. Oh, okay. Prestige and New Jazz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I picked up a copy of this. I just hit my eye with the corner. Excellent. Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> Harlem River Drive. Oh, man. Yeah. And the promo, and it was $75 at um, that one booth that had, they had all this like jazz, and they were these two old guys. And um, I was not there. What's that? <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> but they had tons of great stuff. I don't know if you guys got there, but it was like on the wing kind of far away in the corner. And uh, everything was either kind of beat up and the prices were all over the place, but I found a lot of really great deals there. I almost like... Bye, Isaiah. So this much. is Isaiah Collier, everybody. Hey. Peace, y'all. Hey, Peace, You guys got to check his music out. Um, oh, he, if, he he comes, a... uh, if he comes to your town, go see him. <laughs> his record... His record, Cosmic Transitions, is is fire. They're talking about your record, Cosmic Transitions, is oh, fire. Man. Thank you. <laughs> you got more content coming this year. You got more content coming this year. Wow. Uh -oh. Yeah, VMP hasn't been able to keep record. it in stock. Can, can you show the Ronnie Foster record? That was hot. Oh, yeah, the Ronnie Foster. Uh, I listened to this today, this record. Uh, oh yeah what? yeah it's i guess it got famous for a lot of like tribe samples but like it's more than that it's like mm -hmm. it's really solid all the way through um and i really wanted it i had seen it at human head for twice the price i found it at the fair and i almost got it earlier um that was a really good score um a copy of bird in hand on the 71 Ooh, label at a very decent one. price um, oh. Unfortunately, there's no RVG in the Dead Wax, which I guess I That's assumed right. if it was going to be Liberty Black label that it would have it. I probably should have checked, but still, it's so clean. Um, it sounded pretty good. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's, it's a that's a great one to have for me. I don't yeah. have a copy. Yeah, yeah. Um, this has nothing to do with it, but I showed this on my Instagram earlier. I thought I'd maybe bring this up in front of the group, but I found this a long time ago. And this is um, 60, I think it's um, it's Collegiate Festival 64, Texas, um, University of Notre Dame, actually. And um, Billy Harper's sextet from North Texas, his college sextet, um, plays on one of the sides of this. And uh, I was just wondering if anyone had ever seen this or heard any recordings from him in college or know anything about it. It's kind of, um, there's nothing online about it. Um, but it's definitely him because I know that's where he went and like the years kind of line up with his career. So if anyone's watching and knows about this, I mean, I really did poke my eye with the corner thing there. Um, <laughs> what else? This was awesome. Um, this is probably one of my favorite things at the festival. That, like, I actually, <laughs> I actually, this is my last one. I know I could just do this all night. Um, no, it's okay. We like we like it. Okay, there's two more actually. I just had to wake up, what? Jason. And oh, people. come on, I'm free. What'd you say? Hold it for Sunny. Yeah, Universal Robot Band, please. Yeah, yeah, give it to him. 
Um, do you have a punch card so every like a yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that's if you like, buy like, you get a ten. Bye, Sonny. I got, I'll come to Brick tomorrow night. Um, I was at I was at one of the booths and there was a guy he had a huge jazz collection. I don't know if he was like Russian or Italian or something. Uh, none of it was really in order, Big but difference. I ran into this guy who runs this store in Miami. I wonder if he's watching. Um, called Found Sound, which is like one of my favorite shops down there, and he has a lot of great knowledge. Um, and I was just flipping through stuff, and he handed me this, and I'd never seen this before. But um, this is Miroslav um, Vitus. Um, it's a Japanese only release around the time of like, uh, you know, his kind of like, you know, the, the 70s kind of funkier things he made. But this has Joe Zawinul, um, Billy Cobham, John McLaughlin um, on it. And I haven't listened to it, but from what I understand and what I read, it's like, one of those Jap Japanese only releases that like is kind of essential. Um, so I'm really excited and curious to listen to this. If you ever see purple or read about it, let me know comments below. Um, and then this was the thing that I was most excited about that I was looking for. We're all looking for Muse records. It seems like all the time. Um, but this is a Buster Williams record. Um, called um crystal reflections and it has let me read here kenny Barron, roy Ayers, uh billy hart um nobu urushiyama jimmy rawls and uh, suzanne kawan on voice but i listened to this and this was fucking excellent very chill um Smoky, kind of funky, but a little bit more, you know, in the, in the jazz realm than like the jazz funk realm. Um, and then lastly, a copy of Speed of Kenny Barron, Peruvian Blue. Mm -hmm. So I sold my copy and I found a pretty cheap copy. So I'll probably hold on to this for a second. This is great. It's not as good as I always thought it would be the first time I heard it, but there's a lot of good stuff on this one. That's just kind of a taste of what I grabbed. Nice. Killer. Hey, uh, Alex, are you feeling okay to show some records or do you are you going to throw up or something uh we'll see we'll see uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, the the is coming to get him. we'll go cheap heat and then uh not so cheap heat so obviously love uh folkways have talked about him a lot this is only five bucks <clears throat> i had been looking for it but uh, it's kind of a tough one to come by of course the ronald uh, klein uh design and photography so kind of cool to you know, Mexican uh, marimba, weird marimba setup with, I mean, it looks like a Steve Reich kind of setup with, um, with like the multiple musicians like that. So haven't spun it. Look forward to that. That was only five bucks. Uh, this was the big one I got from that French seller yes. on the Futura label that uh, Mike was talking about. Jacques Thalo, the French uh, percussionist, um, drummer, you know, he played a lot on uh, a lot of the, the great jazz um, records of the 70s. Uh, this one is definitely more like left field. He's done a lot of, you know, weird things, percussion, piano, plays, I think he plays everything right, um, Dom, if I recall. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, happy to grab that one. You know, strangely, this record was on consignment here in California with uh, Permanent Records, if you guys know that shop. Um, but yeah, it was priced too high and same copy. So I finally got it. Uh, this one I got from Billy, uh, you put it in my hands at some point during the night. Uh, he did that to a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> he just, uh, put, shit, he just put shit in our hands. <laughs> uh, Milestone Carl Berger, the, uh, great, uh, I think he was Austrian, uh, vibes player with here with, uh, Ed Blackwell, Dave Holland, Carl Sward. Oh, cool. Uh, Weird. I mean, it's, it's a real tough one to find. I mean, it's not expensive, but it's just like it doesn't pop up. What uh, what label was that on? It's on Milestone, which is interesting. Um, that vendor that, that you were talking about, Mike, with uh, on that corner there or that wing. Yeah, all of his stuff was kind of unsleeved. A lot of it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some real gems in there if you dug in. Uh, this is like a really rare record again not, not too expensive but um just um, led by uh Khalil Zabar. 
Cajillo Savard, yeah, awesome percussionist. And then uh, Maurice McIntyre, who's obviously having a lot of Del Mar sessions and so on. So that was great. Uh, what else we got? Uh, um, that's not expen that that seems like an expensive record, no? Uh, which one? The ethnic heritage music ensemble. Those are those are hard to find. Like, like, it was hard, but I mean, I got it for like probably thirty five bucks. That's really good. I've been looking for that fucking record. Excuse my language. Yeah, and then, uh, you know this one I've been looking for a while. Oh, I you can say oh. fuck here. It's okay. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, that fucking record. Yeah. Kind of a creepy cover, very seventies. <laughs> John Chikai, the great uh, Danish uh, reeds player. Um, uh, VC, great VC channel, uh, Jamie. Um, uh, what's, his, what's the name of the channel, Dom? Uh, uh, Infinite Sound. Infinite Sound, fantastic. I think uh, I know he's on the, on the Discord, uh, uh, Discord Jazz Bombs thing. He talked about this record. It was already on my radar, so when I saw this, for like... Yeah, for like 6570, which is way, way under what it usually goes. So I'm really nice. happy to grab that one. That's cool, man. Um, I just have to show this for a little interlude here. We're at the top of the hour. We're going to go to the latest at another half hour, 730. Not, it's not going to be an all night. But I want to show what apparently Jason uh, ate two days in a row. This is the fish. Huh. Jason had fish two days in a row. That little <laughs> right. store. The only place you could walk to the venue when you walked out of it, but you couldn't go back in. So there you go. Hey, Maz, you mind if I show a couple first? My, my phone's about to die. I'm who's, to... who's talking? Is that Frank? Oh, that's Yeah, that's me. Okay, my, of course. My battery's about to die on the phone. This came from Billy's store. It was playing while we were there. Man, this sucker is banging. Yeah. Uh, like there are parts that just reminds me of of Can. Like you could see where Can kind of came up with their the, some of their sound. Just in, absolutely incredible. That's uh, cool. You got to love the cover on this. Held on. That was like a like a wow. Sunra record. Man, it, it, this is great. Like helmet. Like uh, like French electronic prog. I'm sure there are people that know way more about it than me, but. That's the best I can do. Uh, this came from that jazz table. What label's that? What's that on? Uh, is it, is it, it Futuro? No, I'm not even sure. Here, here's the back. Is it Private Press? Okay. Cool. Looks awesome. Dead Kennedys. This is a UK press. I've uh, been looking for it. It's not super rare, but just been looking for it for 25 bucks. You can't beat it. Nice. Then, uh, since I was in Brooklyn, I had to get an original Wu Tang Clan. That's <laughs> 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 you Got it by Voices. I love this table. There was an older woman there. She was selling all the, all these albums. They were hers, I believe. And she was just telling stories about where she collected them all, like what her favorite songs are. But I'm glad to find that. Did that she ride her bike to see those bands when she was like 12? Yeah, one of those like big wheel on the front bikes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> on a bicycle built for two. Uh, Ruthless Records. This, I bought this from Human Head. Um, this is like Ruthless Records. That was Easy E's record label. I know this is, it's not even really my wheelhouse, but uh, some of that early rap I really like. Um, this I was just flipping through records, and then someone I think it was Dom or, or Brandon who were with, we were with said this is really good. So I picked it up and listened to it. It's great. Uh, this I got from Billy Store. This is Panda Bear. This is a single. Um, I thought that this version there, there's a song on here. It's called Good Girl and Carrots. It kind of flows into each other. I thought it was a different version than the album version, but it turns out it is. I think it's the same, but either way. Glad to have it, and then with the help of Stunty, picked up this nurse with wound. Yes, there you go. That's nice. it. Got kind of, kind of a, a good mix. It run, runs across the board, but that's it, guys. And then that's like from Brooklyn Record Exchange. Cool. So, all right, guys, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get going. My phone's gonna die. And nice I'll see you. Yeah, <clears throat> Frank. Take it easy, Frank. Yeah, take care. Take care, Frank. Hey, hey, Dom. Did you guys make it to um, um did you make it to Ergot? 
We did. Uh, my, myself and Brandon did. Um, we were there for a good hour. That's a great shop. Yeah. It's super well curated. Um, it's, it is a lot of reissues, but there's also plenty of very fairly priced uh, used records, I thought. It's small. You can go through the whole store in like 30 minutes. Yeah. I loved it. And they, I did some trade with them. Um, it worked out super well. Um, yeah, love that store. How yeah, I do. I, 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 I stopped by there pretty frequently. Um, oh, I did so get the like, Abdul Wadu reissue, yes. Yeah, it's in between everything for me. Like, if, if I get off the subway, so right. I stop there. I was going to show this just that I, I, I did come with the intention that in this past weekend to find a good bit of reggae or dub records. Um, being that uh, New York is a good spot for that and did not disappoint. Billy had this one. Uh, this is one of uh, maybe the unsung Lee Perry. Well, it's, it is well regarded, but a lot of people don't know Lee Perry uh, did a lot, was producing every day, working with artists every day. And this is in the heyday of Lee Perry's uh, production work at Black Ark. This is uh, Max Romeo's War in a Babylon. Um, you know, if you like the Junior Mervyn Police and Thieves, if you like the Congos, um this this thing is a smoker and i've uh, been looking for a nice that's cool original on the blue on the uh beautiful uh mango of course mm -hmm. uh, um and there was i i did that about mid 70s is that uh 76 yeah on yeah. island or yeah, yeah. island subsidiary mango there right. was a dealer who i had no idea about i ended up finding some really nice jazz um um a couple of nice jazz records who was way in the corner who had a little reggae pocket and he had some he had like three to five three to seven hundred dollar dub records just sitting yeah. there i was like what is this um <laughs> i obviously didn't bring any of those home but had i gotten to that first i might have i don't know we might have negotiated but um it was a good that's a good point i wanted to mention is like there's there was some dealers sort of nestled in little you know, like you know parts of the parts of the uh knockdown center there with like serious records. I mean, there was a Khan Jamal record for $1,500 sitting in one of two bins just sitting there um, in the in the back corner. I was like, what's going on here? Um, you know, maybe maybe a little insanely priced, but the the, the breadth of prices and, the, and the, the, the heat that some of these dealers were bringing, it could not be underestimated. So um, you really had to look through everything. And then there were cheap, there was cheap records there too, by the way, I don't know if, anyone dug through dollar bins or or the some of the five dollar bins but there was actually quite a bit of that too no i guess not everyone was just buying expensive records <laughs> <laughs> pretty much uh, that, that was what i was doing so i found something cheap on the last day i bought the cheapest record and the most expensive record can you guess which one was the cheapest and which one was the most expensive? <laughs> <laughs> that Brazilian, that is very cool. Yeah, this is the Brazilian one. Um, so I haven't listened to it yet. We just listened with Jason a little bit, um, but I cleaned it and I'm going to give it a proper listen. And this was only five bucks. Does anyone know about this Quadra? Mm-mm. RC did a lot of quad discs when Columbia when Columbia was doing their quads. It was kind of a a moment or a couple of years of those in the seventies when those records were came, coming out. I don't know. I didn't know anyone who had a quad system. I know you don't need them a quad system, but the Human Head uh, from the Pittsburgh dealer was his name Mind Cure. I got mm. um, a Blue Label Casablanca Parliament. Nice. Um, I got a Mint for you. France. Nice. That's good. I got a UK Clash. Nice. And then I got an upgrade copy of a record that I already have. Um, and this is like immaculate. At least the disc is. Mm. A promo. Nice. Okay. Now, yeah. Didn't you get? Is, I forgot where you got. Didn't you get a UK Tommy also? Yes. Uh, that I got at the table with the British mm -hmm. guy. The French guy who was selling Brit uh, all UK presses. I got um, I got the I got the plastic auto bands UK. Well, UK that's the best sounding. I have a original UK that that sounds so good that album. Then I got the Tommy. Yeah. 
and I got a mono pepper. Nice. Now, how much? So, I thought Arnaldo got a pretty good deal on that mono pepper. What? Yeah. Mazzy, I mean, you gave me a break. It was originally eighty. I think I got it for sixty. Mazzy, what? How much would a mono clean copy of Sergeant Pepper UK? Uh, what? The, well, the very the fr a first press could be. A is that a pr Arnaldo, what pressing is that? Do you, uh, do you know? That is a first like press. I looked it up today. Well, that could be a few hundred dollars, definitely. Um, That's why I, mean, I mean, he got that for 80 bucks and and with, in, inserts. with inserts. As the two inserts on it, too. That's pretty good. Man, that's a good price. And then at, I got, at, at a I, got the, I got, I think I've showed this on, on another stream. I got the cleanest copy you will ever find <laughs> of Dirty <laughs> Man. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So clean and dirty. Cleanest. Of oh, dirty. Very good. We had to verify that a couple of times. <laughs> you know, there was um, on Saturday a lot of people. Did you notice? I mean, this is weird doing these YouTube things. A lot of people came up to you and said, "Oh, I know you from YouTube," and I only saying that because, and I forgot his name, which one he is. But some guy started talking to me. He goes, "I love your channel," and he pulls out of his bag and this is his band, and he gave me this record. Oh, cool. Um, I haven't listened to it yet. What are they called? Are they called Practical Classics? That can't be the name of the band. I don't, I don't even know what they're called. What's Left, the album's called? What's Left? I don't know anything about it. I don't know the kind of music, and I apologize. But that's the guy. That's the illustration of the guy. So I'm thanking you, and I'm, I'm sorry. I can't remember which one you are there. But it was, he pulled it out and just handed me this, so. I'll listen to <laughs> hey, show up and just give me shit, right? Uh, um, it's really sweet, but um, anyway, I don't know anything about it. So if you're watching, I apologize. I don't remember, but I will listen to it. There. Very cool. I'll show another one. This is probably my highlight. Um, I didn't pay much for this, but this is uh, John Hicks on Teresa with Walter Booker and Idris Muhammad. Um, I just love John Hicks. I, I got into him. I actually bought um, the Pure Pleasure reissues of his two um, his two records on Strata East that were actually his two first recorded sessions, but didn't get released till the mid '80s and late uh, mid mid and '80s and mid '90s. Um, this is his his second official release um, on Teresa, and it's just I mean it's, this stuff is is just hard driving piano trio. Um, really stoked to have this you know i think i only paid 15 bucks for it but um i think i got this one from joe as well which was uh the guy that had a lot of the, the good jazz stuff fairly inexpensively um yeah so yeah that one's that one's my highlight so far i've gotten through most of them but cool um actually mike do you want to uh handle this question They oh. cried when they met him. That's what I'm going to say. They <laughs> cried, and uh, I had to ask them to wipe the drool off their mouths. Okay. So, uh, I mean, honestly, it was it was really fun. We got to uh, to chat with them a little bit, gossip a little bit. Mazzy got some B roll or or some video footage of it, uh, and uh, and then later on, right. Mike Mike Notes and Tones and I uh, connected with them a little bit later, and then actually. Jazz Bums just, uh, we were able to do an interview with him. So we connected with him earlier today, actually. Um, so that interview is probably going to come out next week. Um, and there's some pretty cool stuff that he's working on uh, that, you know, I, I don't want to say right now, but um, there is there is some cool stuff in that interview that he's going to share. And he's producing um, a project right now that we, we talk about. So uh, be on the lookout for that. But he was great. I mean, he was really nice. Um, we uh, we blocked up the aisle for a good like twenty minutes. So I'm sure all the vendors really appreciated that. Oh, my, <laughs> my camera's all messed up. But yeah, no, it was cool and it was neat. Like when we heard that he was there, there was like an there was like an air of just like Fremers here. So we like we're looking for him. We connected with him, and it was so funny because Mazzy, I was with Mazzy at the time, and we're walking down the aisle, and we're like, oh, there's Fremers. So Mazzy pulls out his camera. We, and then we approach him and he like literally was on like he saw that like Mazzy was there he like 
as we approach. I've met him. I met him. Mavi, Mavi is met. filming him, and he's like on, like ready to film. Hello. <laughs> it was just like he was. He was just ready. He was just ready for it. It's incredible. Uh, Billy's on the move. Can I? So I want to show cool. something that's not part of this, but it just. I just got it, and it's not part of the New York thing, so I apologize. But I think so, it might be of interest to some of you here. Um, Chronicle Books reached out to me about a month ago, and they're putting out this book in November, and they sent me a, an advanced copy, and I'm really excited about this because uh, Joel Selvin. Uh, was the critic of the San Francisco Examiner. He's done books on San Francisco Sound and Altamont. And, and, but this is a book he co-wrote with the late, and up until they, he finished it before he died, Chris Strockwitz of Down Home Music. And, um, hmm. and of course, um, you know, our Hooli Records. And Very cool. he started our Hooli Records. It's all these photographs that he took starting with um, all, all the people from Zydeco to Blues to uh, Tehana, 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 you know, all the stuff, Roots music he did with um, Arhuli. Of course, years later, maybe 20 years ago, he sold uh, Arhuli to Smithsonian Folkways. Um, but it's a, I haven't really even read or anything about it, but it's a cool book of all these photographs with stories by Chris Drockwitz, and he just died last year. And I met him a number of times because he helped a good friend of mine when my when my friend was passing away. So Chris and I were, would talk every week for about two months at that point. And then he arranged for my friend's uh, uh, Vernon's record collection sold to Down Home Music in um, in the East Bay and in El, in El Cerrito or San Pablo. Where is it? Um, anyway, I just thought I'd show that. So uh, we'll buy it or pre-order it. Very cool. I know it's a little off topic, but I know you guys are into some of that stuff. So God, my camera's all fucked up. Okay. Is is, is, is did you go downtown at the club now? Oh, you're driving. Okay. I'm almost yeah. home. People drive in New York. What the fuck? Yeah. What yeah. Are you, a parking spot. What the hell is going on? Hey, no turn uh, on red. Heads up. I'll be looking for a spot for the next hour or so. Okay, we got about 15 minutes before we close out. Anything else? Let me show. Oh, I'll show one more thing because um, I did listen to this tonight. This is another Dom suggestion, and uh, I wouldn't say it's primitive guitar, but it's definitely acoustic guitar. I don't know if you want to talk about this more, but um, it sounded great. It. Um, yeah, it's, it's George Cromarty. He has another. He has one album that you see all the time on Wyndham Hill, which I would avoid that, but. This one is on his own little label called Thistle, and it's just nice, sort of sweet instrumental guitar. I mean, it, it's it's you know, it's not going to blow your mind, really. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful record. But it's lovely. But uh, I bought it at Billy's, and my promo thing fell off, Billy. Uh, no returns. <laughs> <laughs> so the price, I think, went down. Um, no, it's. it's... No, I can I just, I'm going to glue this on to like whatever I want to. Right. Yeah, just use some rubber cement. That's what I do. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> That's a great cover. <laughs> anyway, I, I really enjoyed it. I played it this afternoon finally. Um, great cover, bad haircut. That's really interesting because when I got that, I didn't. I just looked into this thing. I knew nothing about it. But the fact, Dom, that you know about it and it's good, it kind of pisses me off a little well, bit. Dom was so, just handing me shit and everything he handed uh, me. Then Mazzy took something that was actually good that I thought. I think it was like I'm a dollar. A I think you might have got me on that one, Mazzy. I'm a, a dollar? Guitar, I paid a lot more than a dollar. I, think, I will say that I Dom's, didn't throw that in. Come on, I must have thrown that in. It's a, Dom's I, it endurance. Wasn't expensive. I don't remember. Dom's endurance is inspiring. I mean, it is. That no, guy was stupid. was elbow deep in crates for just hours on. I hours did get an was... upgrade copy of uh, of Big Fun because I just yep. showed it the other day. I have a Ringware used copy that's noisy as hell, and I was kind of looking for just a nice, clean copy of this and. I pulled one at Billy's salon, and he goes, "You know, I got a better one in the back room where I keep all the drugs and shit." So he that went was back. And comes <laughs> to the That's and my. But he came out and he handed he handed this that to was my me. Per he had to wipe the cover off. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, it's got some that... like uh, razor blade marks on the insert, but um, it's it's actually it's called Big Fun. What do you expect? I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, I. That was my personal, Maz, you must know that that's my personal copy I gave you. Now I'm, 
I suffered. Oh, yeah, I can smell you on it. I can smell you on it. <laughs> it's very personal to me. <laughs> big, yeah, that's yeah. The it's got my big funk all over it. <laughs> no, I don't know. All my records from Billy smell like baked beans. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you should talk to my girlfriend. Be worse. She's the same thing. Be worse. <laughs> Uh, I mean, we had a good time. And then after Billy's, we tried to go. There was like nine of us or or there was first 10, I think, came down to nine. Or, and then there was that young uh, British guy that that wasn't cool enough to hang out with us. Yeah, Jason. Uh, Jason's buddy. Yeah. Oh, he was no. cool. You know, I actually forgot. I'm kidding. I, I'm kidding. I picked up this from Billy's, too. I, I totally forgot to show it. But this is and I was talking with with him uh I'm sorry. No one ever got his name, so we're just going to refer to him as... What was his name? Chris. His name is Chris. Chris. Okay, so, well, this... I mean, it's a classical record. It's Stravinsky, the Firebird on Decca Mono, and it's from, like, 54. It's, like, really early. Um, And, uh, anyway, it's not particularly, like, an expensive record. That's a killer cover, though. Um, And I've been getting into classical collecting, and these Decca records really are well-recorded, um they sound fantastic so uh i got this uh this was part of the bundle i got from billy's but uh really just you know i'm just happy to get them you know if i can get this is a mono uh stereo decas are preferred but i mean you know honestly they they're great to get so i already listened to this i listened to a lot of the stuff i got already i was super excited i i i've been spinning records like crazy um what's the tarot card that you have in there well, because there's a rip at the bottom, so I just put. Uh, it's like another. It's like a, a sticker from a, a local record store that kind of matches the cover a little bit, so I put it in there <laughs> um, just to cover it up. But uh, anyway, just some 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 other. I showed the guys this probably. Everybody on screen has probably shown, has has seen me show them these records probably five times on Saturday. So apologies, but just for the audience, I picked up a uh, this C- Cecil McBee on Indian Navigation. Um, this has Don Pullen on it, and I've already I've listened to this once. It's really, really good. I also have his Strata East record, uh, Mutum, Mutimba, um, and there's another Indian Navigation called Free Something. I forget the name of it, but I want to get that too. I really like his lead stuff, and what a great cover that is. So, got this. Um, this was uh, this record is really, really, really desirable right now. This is Joe Henderson on Tetragon. I got this for basically half of what it goes for. Um, online at least um but it's super clean i thought this was a first pressing it's not the first pressing has a blue label i didn't know milestone had a blue label do you guys know that the milestone blue this is the second pressing came, came out a year later but it's like mint i mean this thing is like in perfect condition i wouldn't even tell you how much i paid for it because it was a steal i was looking also i don't have any fmp uh records uh, so I was looking for that, and this actually was in my Discogs card, um, and I found it there for a really good price. Well, this was part of a bundle, so it was all really good price. So I got uh, jo- uh, John Sakai with the Strange Brothers on uh, on FMP. Um, I've listened to this already. It's really good. Um, I got this Andrew Hill Trio on uh, – this is a Steeplechase. Um, this was good. I've listened to this already as well. Really, really – actually – I've only listened to side A, so I got to keep keep listening to that. Got this for ten dollars. This is a clean Orpheum label pressing of Jazzland. It's like that's like a ridiculous price. I mean, this is not, this is an expensive record um, compared to a ten dollar. And then the last thing I'll show, last thing I picked up, this was a. I was leaving, and I just kept digging as we were leaving. It was so funny because like we were trying to leave to get lunch, and like everybody just kept digging. And it's just nobody did anything. We didn't leave. I was like starving, and I was like, "Wait, let me just check this bin." We just couldn't leave. <laughs> and, well, and that the was the problem. We couldn't leave. You knew we, once like, we left. It, it just, we just kept just like it. we would just like we would like aggr- we would like come together, talk, and then somebody would go and like find a bin to dig in. It just took forever to get out of there. So this was the last thing I picked up, and uh, this has been in my card for like the past year. Um, Clifford Brown with strings. You have a record player in your car? Uh, I, I don't even know what I just said, but I, I don't think that's what I said. But anyway, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Clifford Brown with strings. Okay. Uh, 
I uh, can you rewind uh, the tape, uh, Billy. I, gen- I generally tape? don't like with string records, but Clifford Brown, um, I like everything that this man has done. He died at 25, very young, but he has a bunch of uh, MRC records, and they're all worth getting from what I've heard. Um, and he has uh, uh, Richie Powell is on this as well, and him and Richie Powell died in a car accident on a way to a gig. And uh, Max Roach is on drums, George Morrow on bass, with strings conducted by Neil Hefty. And they play beautiful songs. And the story behind this is... The writer think of Batman. The story, I think, is his wife at the time said it was either that they they that she would only have a child with him if he made a with strings record so he put this out that's the lore it was either that or it was his girlfriend and she wouldn't marry him until she put it it was one one of the two big big milestones there but but anyway so supposedly that's the story but it's really good they do a bunch of standards all familiar stuff and i got that for a really good price i'm pretty sure it was jason rojas's copy at one point my no strings attached joke didn't make it because I was. Uh, okay. Um, this is probably the highlight of Billy's record store for me. Um, in terms of French folk pop from a woman who killed her boyfriend, uh, this oh, is Claudine yeah. Longet. So good. And she had. I haven't listened to this yet, but it's so good, man. I mean, you know, she, uh, she was married to Andy Williams in the '60s. Uh, they get divorced, but Andy is a supporter of her, and she kills Spider Savage. Is that his name? The, for, the French skier shoots him with his own yeah. gun. But on here is God Only Knows. God Only Knows by the Beach Boys. Every okay. Night by Paul McCartney. Leonard Cohen. <laughs> uh, Wake Up Gently by, I don't know who that is. Okay. Uh, Jealous Guy, Don't Let Me Down by both Lennon and McCartney. That's great. It's a mel- medley, right? Yeah. When I Loved Him, Chris Christopherson, Birds, Neil Young, Sleep Song, Graham Nash, and a Mickey Newberry song, and the and let's spend the night together. I can only just hear her light little French kind of yay yay girl voice. It uh, has like a very Bell and Sebastian kind of sound to it. It's a singer songwriter album, really. It's great though. It's in nineteen seventy two. Like, Look at those bell bottoms, man. And Ma- Mazzy bought it for the feet. Let's be real. <laughs> Mazzy, who's, who's the backing band on that? Who's the backing band on that? It's, is it like a? It's not like uh, Wrecking Crew. I think Led Zeppelin backs her. Um, oh, that on. makes sense. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> Wrecking or... Crew or like no, it's Muscle Shoals some... or something? No, it's no one? Larry Carlton, of course. Larry Carlton. Yeah. Uh, I hate when they do this type on a different color background where it's like um, Joe Osborne. Uh, a bunch of other uh, wankers. I don't know. Whatever. Oh, Norm, Norman Seif did the photography. I'm always in photographers. Norman Seif did all those great Joni Mitchell records. Um, a lot of great, great uh, pop rock celebrity photographer, Norman Seif. But, uh, this is on uh, Barnaby Records. I think that was, was that a division of Columbia? I forgot. I used to know that stuff, but I don't mm. remember anymore. I buy that record and give it away to people who come into the shop. I did get a deal on it. I think I got $2 off. Yeah. 20 percent is that what it was okay um but i highly recommend everyone get that record too i mean i'm i like schmaltzy shit like that it's so. not schmaltzy it's not it's like look well, it's a singer songwriter record no it's not it has this like bit like the god only knows it's like it's mixed really weird it's kind of like psychier. Is it psychedelic like, yeah it's psychier it's like it's not schmaltzy at all it's like oh yeah it's it's a really like every time I play it or if I DJ, everyone's like, "What's this? What's this?" It doesn't. It's wait till you hear it. It's not what you think. Okay, all right. Her record before it is very schmaltzy. Okay, I tried to go for that one. That's schmaltzy. Uh, hold on, hold on. We got um, we got uh, I think a special request here. Uh, let's see. Someone's gonna finally sit down and tell us something. This is the one record I was looking for. Gal Costa Cantar, 1974. Does anyone know what Cantar means on the panel? It's the Who guy sings? that sings with the rabbi at the Who shul. Sing? <laughs> uh, rephrase it in the question, please. You know, this is BC Jeopardy. Come what on. is to sing? There we go. Uh, this is the only one I was looking for. It was amazing that I got it. So very cool. Um, nice. Fifty dollars, I think. And then we'll give a shout out to Billy. Billy, thanks for selling me this OG, a fancy dancer. 
Nice. So how's it sound? It wasn't. It wasn't a. It was not the nicest copy, is it? No, thanks a lot, Billy. Um, <laughs> uh, and then uh, this one for twenty. I found this at Academy, so this is badass. I can't see yeah, man. Yeah, man. What's the pressing on that, Jason? What's the pressing? Yeah. New Jazz, I guess. I don't know. Uh, no, I mean, yeah. What's the label? Is it? Does that have a purple label or, or the blue tri? It's the Prestige yeah. logo, isn't it? Purple. Nice. He won't show us. He's afraid to. He won't tell it. That's a steal. That's a steal. <laughs> Turn it around. Know, it's purple. I'll go get it if you want to see it. Oh, no, no. No, no. it's fine. It's fine. I saw it. I'm, I'm only here to make people cry. That's what I do. I cry. cry. Should, we, mad. should we show your fish again? Jason, no. Jason serves his records in one room and the jackets in another. Jo Jason talked more about that those fishes, that, that fish he ate twice than records. No, well, I, I try to get people to get the fish, but everybody was like, nah, 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 I'm trying to. It looks good. It looked good. good. Um, it was just a lot. Fish. It was just, it was like a really big meal. Oh, yeah. I was totally hungry. I mean, like, come on. We were like, I'd have to take a nap. You know, not a digging. <laughs> For my soul people, Marvel Whitney live and low down at the Apollo. Awesome. Okay. This is, this is like the female version, I mean, of James Brown before Lynn Collins. I mean, heads up. But mm -hmm. fantastic. This was at Academy. I can't believe this. No. Nice. Wow. Cool. Jose, did that satisfy your, uh, you know, I could show some shitty records. You know. I actually, I got to go. I got to take this dog out. This is Remy. Okay. Well, we're going to wind down in a, in a minute anyway. But um, bye, Remy. Remy? Remy? Remy. Like, like Remy, Remy Martin? Martin? Yeah. Or, or uh, Remington. Uh, Oh, yeah. Firearms. Oh, <laughs> your dog, Mike. Steel. <laughs> oh, very nice. This is Ronnie James Classic. Dio. You might have heard of him. You know, he used to play for the Beatles. Right. John Paul George Dio. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Best group ever. All right. All right. I picked I pick this up from Billy. Um, and I like Billy. Sometimes you wrote little notes on there. This is like a Billy love fest. Today. It is. Thank yeah. you guys. For That's how me. I feel about Billy. Oh, you right picked there. that up. Nice. Yeah. So, so Frank actually pulled this, um, and then he he gave it a listen, and it wasn't up his alley. So I took it, um, and I gave it a listen, and fell in love. So um, beautiful Burt Goldblatt cover, um, first pressing on Dawn Records. Um, that it's all arrangements by Julius Watkins on French horn. It's got Charlie Rouse on it on tenor, who you're probably familiar with, recorded with you know many different groups and wow. it has some great records on Strata East, but um really, really happy to have this one. It was very refreshing. It's it's got a uh, Janet Putman on harp too on a few tracks. So it's really yeah. cool record and in pretty good shape for ten bucks. For a white yeah, exactly. For ten bucks, exactly. Did you keep the note? Pretty cool. I did. So That's cool. cool. Wow. That's between. <laughs> I, I had a note. That's between you and me. That note is between. Oh my god! Then Mike went to walk his dog. What if I gotta go. Thank you. Uh, for having I bought me. this one as well, which also had a Billy note. That record oh, that is so cool. good. The buddy. So good. Yeah. Yeah. On Dudo. It's like proto proto oh, cool. spiritual jazz or something. Like yeah. That uh, there's a Dexter Gordon record on that label, right? Yes. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hot has... and cold. Hot and cool. Yeah, I don't want to be embarrassed the like host, the, the like the jazz host. bums where Chris is on for eight hours or or uh, when, <laughs> pull the or, plug, uh, Mazzy, pull the plug. George Borden's on for nine hours. Wait a second, Jason, hold on. I can't believe that was twenty bucks. That can't be. Yeah, how's that twenty dollars? That's bullshit. No, no, I, it... I thought. <laughs> Uh, there's cigarette burns on it what's going is on is it a compilation or is it like a record like <laughs> did you get that from billy's no, no that's from academy. academy okay that's a misprice misprice i will say billy had some really good prices thanks guys mm -hmm. I, mean, I changed them all right when you left <laughs> <laughs> you could have honestly doubled them all they, mm -hmm. they the prices on some of those i I was shocked to see some of the price tags. They were well really in New York. It's it's funny deal. because you think that things are going to be more expensive here because of the rest. Yeah. But it's like everyone. There's like a lot of stores around that have really good prices. And like I go to other towns and I'm like, you know, I was just in Atlanta yesterday and I went to this place called 
criminal records and their prices were fucking criminal. It was like they had some good records, but everything was just so. And I'm like, this is Atlanta. Like, what are you guys doing? Like, you know, I it's think like, it varies um, at store to store. I mean, in Seattle are some places that are pretty expensive by uh, other levels. But then you go to another store or a couple of records will have that are cheaper than you'd think they'd be. So, I, yeah. you know. I don't think you can just say it's across the board all always going to be expensive. I guess you're right. I mean, I'm just saying that the, the, the some of the stores in New York, I feel like people assume it's going to be more expensive because it's New York. But yeah, I don't know. Think I don't know. It's, it's, people sometimes price their records as if they don't want to sell them. Like I just, it's <laughs> fun to. Well, we were in the East Village, and I didn't think anything was. I mean, of course, I wasn't looking for any. Even this wall records, there weren't crazy prices. I've seen at Easy Street here on their wall. There's some you know expensive stuff. But I didn't really see a lot of that here. You guys uh, went to A1, right? Or no? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah, so you that's forgot cool. the wall at Stranded? The oh, that's expensive. Record? Stranded yeah. time. What, Chet Baker record was like $800. Which one was it? The Chet Baker one. Oh, Jason yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're obviously they're isolated yeah. titles. That that was that, that, that great what Chet, mid-century what, picture. Chet Baker Sings was $800? No, okay. yeah. Jason, which, which Chet Baker was oh. it? That was $800. The Tone Poet. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, that, I'm gonna get a copyright strike for you just showing that fucking record on my channel. <laughs> I really, I really do gotta go, but I, I do right. want to. I had an amazing time on Saturday. I loved uh, just digging and chatting with everybody, and I really can't wait for the next time to be able to do that. So, thank you, everybody. I, I, I had such a good time. Thank you. Yeah, I think right, unless it's anything to show, I think we should wind it down anyway. That's, yeah. I, this will be up for people to watch. Oh, just leave like that. Okay. Um, <laughs> so long. Um, I want to thank, I mean, Dom, especially Dom got me for some reason. He hypnotized me on that video he did months ago. And I like it because when you're, when you book time ahead, you, know, you can get a decent flight. I use a combination of miles and, and money and stuff. And it's, a, it's, it works it out better than a last minute thing. And again, Arnaldo and Walter for, offering to host me that was really sweet so um i would do it again depending on you know next year round two yeah well, so they do it again next year again right yeah i think they will maybe yeah, yeah. and if anyone yeah, any of you guys not anyone in the peanut gallery because i don't know half of you but uh come to seattle i have a guest room so you know excellent but i need advanced warning and stuff so yeah oh we oh we, we got a last minute here it's your final showing. I know, right? So we wish you were there. So maybe next year at WFMU, you can all meet us. <laughs> Great. Good, good. Yes. And on that, right. and on that. That was the most dad joke record. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Thanks, everybody. And yeah, you guys started this. So thanks for having me, too. I appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers. Later. Cheers, everyone.